الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الأمين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أو praises due to Allah and we bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone with no partners. He is the helper and the protector of the believers. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave and his messenger, the trustworthy. We ask Allah to exalt his mention. We ask Allah to grant him peace, his companions, and all those who follow them on the path of righteousness until the day of recompense. The brothers and sisters in Islam and people of other faith and uh, relatives in the various countries including the Philippines this message is first and foremost to the speaker and then to you and it is intended to remind us of something which we have intentionally or unintentionally forgotten it is about the day we return. And when we speak about the day we return, we have to look into the Quran. And since it's the month of Ramadan, Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us with the opportunity to hear the book of Allah, to hear his book being recited. And it has been emphasized over and over again the importance of learning or understanding the message for those who don't speak Arabic in order to benefit from the reminders. When a human being admonishes you and reminds you and you find that your heart is softened and that you uh, feel like you're inclining towards repentance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet the human being is only utilizing his own speech. It's human speech, deficient, full of errors and incomplete but when the admonishment comes from Allah Azza wa Jal, the creator of the creation who knows about their condition and the condition of their hearts and what is suitable for them and what is beneficial for them then the reminder has a whole nother flavor and effect we need to learn and understand the maw'idha which is found in the Quran which we have been blessed to hear on daily basis. Every night you stand, you stand behind the Imam, the magnitude of the words is something which no human being can elaborate on or even begin to elaborate on. The effectiveness of the reminder after being heedless for a whole year, we find that in Ramadan we start realizing how misguided we are and the amount of shortcomings we are involved in and the fact that we might think we are upon guidance but we're truly not upon guidance when we compare ourselves to the messengers of Allah when we see how Allah Azza wa Jal praises Ibrahim in Surah Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran and that he was given a burden a heavy burden by Allah and he was tested in the greatest of ways and he was patient. Which one of us will be able to slaughter his son for the sake of Allah? And which one of us will be given the task of building the Kaaba, the house of Allah? And he and Ismail while building the house, what was their dua? What were they saying? Look at us, we are special people, we are chosen people. They were saying, Rabbana taqabbal minna, our Lord accept from us and forgive us our sins. Verily you are the one who hears everything and knows everything. When we hear these ayat and other ayat, then we realize that we have a long way to go. And that there's a lot of fixing that we have to take care of before we depart. Before the day we return. And the day we return has been addressed in the Quran in two ways. There's the day we return as in the day we will die and leave this worldly life and that is the first departure and the first kind of return to Allah and then there's another one 
which will be at the time of resurrection, when it will be blown into the horn, and everyone will be resurrected from their graves, and then we will be standing before Allah for the accountability. And then as Allah said, فَرِيقٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَفَرِيقٌ فِي السَّعِيرِ A group of people will end up in paradise, and another group will end up in the hellfire. And each one of us here will have to go to one of these two destinations. And this destination we will wind up in depends on what we choose to do today. So this is a serious matter. What I have done with the humble effort that Allah facilitated is just basically choose or highlight some of the ayat which speak about these facts. These facts which we have become accustomed to hearing but not hearing well enough to do something about it where they go from one ear out of the other, as they say. Not the hearing which produces inclination towards Allah. Not the hearing which produces a sincere repentance. Not the hearing which makes us after hearing this ayah, say once again, I will start a new page with Allah. Every time we hear some of these ayat, every night, we should have a sincere repentance to Allah. Even if we fail the next day. But we should never reach a stage where we don't care anymore. Or that tawbah is something that we don't observe, or we don't fetch for, or we don't seek. Tawbah is, is this key for success. Because every one of us is sinful. And what differentiates the sinfulness of one person versus the other, is the one who repents versus the one who doesn't. No one is going to say, I walk upon this earth free of sin. And the Prophet ﷺ does not lie. Every son of Adam is sinful. And the best of those who have sinned are those who repent. So the objective of this lecture, or any other lecture, if you can please turn off this, this sound. The objective of all of these lectures is to remind us of this tawbah. Perhaps... Perhaps our time has come. And when we do return to Allah, we will do so in the right state. And our brother was just telling us about a brother of ours who just recently passed away on Friday. And he had a flight booked back home. And obviously he returned home. But not that home. The home which Allah had intended for us, all of us, the grave. And there's a huge difference between going back home and going to the ultimate home, which is the grave. And in the grave there will be no special service by the flight attendant. And there will be no cold juice. And there will be no one to look after you. It's either our good deeds which will save us from the torment, or our bad deeds which will make us among those who are punished. These are the decisions which we have to make and reflect on. As for the first return, which is the moment of death. And in previous lectures, we have described in detail, and I believe it was the lecture six feet under, the condition of the believer and the disbeliever at the time of death. And we mentioned that for each and every one of us who will have to go through this moment, he will be met by angels. The angel of death will come, with assistance and it will retract the soul for the disbeliever it is a moment of humiliation and it is a moment of regret and it is a moment when they will wish they can return back or remain alive to rectify their condition but they will not be allowed as Allah said that the malaika will have their hands stretched out and they will say to them bring out your own souls you have to come out now and then of course it will be from that moment onwards, from the time the angels try to uh, rise with that soul to the first heaven, and then that person's soul will be rejected. The angels will not admit that person into the first heaven, and it will be commanded to go back into the earth, into the grave, and then the grave will become a pit from the pits of the hellfire. And that person will remain burning in their grave. We don't see it, we don't hear it, and we don't feel it. But we believe it. We believe it with certainty. 
Because Allah spoke about it in the Quran and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his Sunnah. And that's what makes us believers. Believing in the unseen. And so that person will be in the state of humiliation to be further humiliated on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. To be later humiliated eternally in the hellfire. Versus the believer who will have a different approach. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, يَا أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّ إِرْجِعِي إِلَىٰ رَبِّكِ رَاضِيَةً مَرْضِيَةً فَدْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَدْخُلِي جَنَّتِي So it will be said to the, oh, the righteous, reassured soul. Return to your Lord, well pleased and pleasing to Him. And so enter into my, among my righteous slaves and enter into my paradise. This is the call which we want to hear, my brothers and sisters in Islam. This is the call which we should anticipate. This is the call which we, sh we should look forward to and work for today. Not everyone will hear this call. Even if we wished, even if we had amani, as the people of the book have amani, Allah said, it is not per your wishes or the wishes of the people of the book. The one who wants to hear this call has to make the effort today. There are things we have to do and things we have to abandon. We have to abandon sins which we know we've been committing ever since we knew they were sins. Until today, we go back and forth to them, back and forth to them. We don't leave them, we don't abandon them. And the person who insists on a sin, we seek Allah's refuge. It's difficult for that person to succeed if the tawbah was not sincere. Because it might be that we will die before that tawbah. It is the moment which Allah Azza wa Jal also spoke about. When Allah said, كَلَّا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ التَّرَاقِ وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقَ وَظَنَّ أَنَّهُ الْفِرَاقِ وَالْتَفَّتِ السَّاقُ بِالسَّاقِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَئِذٍ الْمَسَاقِ Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about that moment when the soul reaches the collarbone. Now people die in different ways. People die in different ways. If someone doesn't die suddenly, as in it's a split second where some accident happens and their soul is taken away, if it is the standard death on the deathbed or in the hospital or even because of an accident but, but the moments before the actual soul leaves, which we have been seeing a lot on YouTube, you know, with all the calamities that are befallen the Muslims in various countries, you see these clips of a, a Muslim in the last moments of death. And then you see the condition of that person. And so we have to imagine ourselves in that particular condition. So when the soul reaches the collarbone, and then it will be said, Man rock, who can cure this person? Which doctor? Bring a whole staff of a hospital. Who can bring life to the soul if Allah had decided that it goes away? No one. Who can cure this, this person? No one. وَظَنَّ أَنَّهُ الْفِرَاقِ And that person will know. Here, ظَن means yaqeen, certainty. That person knows it's time for separation. And so if it's, an, if it's a man with his wife and kids in front of him, you know, all of them are around the deathbed, he knows this is the last time he will see him. And they know this is the last time they will see him. He will see them. And they will see him. This will be the last time. And then the, the leg will be wound around the other one. It's an indication of weakness of the son of Adam at the time of death. إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَئِذٍ الْمَسَاقِ To your Lord, on that day will be the procession. The return will be to Allah Azza wa Jal alone, no one else. So this is like someone knows their whole life that they, they have to, let's just say in school. You have, you're given a whole school year and you know at the end you will be uh, having an exam right before the principal of the school. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. The, the wise, intelligent person will prepare for that day. And the foolish person will keep thinking it will never happen. Or maybe somehow one teacher will hook me up. Or the teacher will just say, don't worry about it, you don't have to meet him. We keep just giving excuses while we know for certainty that this moment will happen. So a person when he dies, there's no, nowhere else to go. Family can't help. Uh, people with wealth cannot help. Uh, your friends and buddies who, who have... Uh, you know, connections cannot help. No one can help. It's between us and Allah Azza wa Jal. This ultimate moment which is coming. And so, this is the first, the first return. Where 
the believer will receive glad tidings and the disbeliever will be given the, the evil news in regards to what is awaiting him. And we have to also remember the first night in the grave. The first night in the grave, that is the most difficult night because this is the first stage of the life, the interval life between this life and the life to come. And that life is very different than the one we live today. And the biggest evidence is that the people who love you the most will bury you and go back home. The people who love you the most, your own family, your own parents, your own spouses, your own children, no matter how valuable you are to them today, they will leave you in the dirt and return back home. And surely after a few weeks, you are forgotten. You will be remembered occasionally. But at some point in time, you become history. The biggest evidence, how many family members you have, have passed away in your life, you don't remember them maybe until this moment. Now that I mention it, you're thinking about your uncle and different people. Until that moment, you weren't even thinking about them. And that could be the same for the parents. But of course, the parents deserve a lot of dua. If one of our parents had passed away, then they are entitled of a lot of dua if they were Muslims. So that night in the grave, what have we prepared? What have we prepared? What is going to benefit us, my brothers and sisters in Islam, in that grave? Nothing. Except al amal salih After having right belief, the righteous deeds. Do we have enough righteous deeds? Can someone say, I am sufficient? I've done so many rak'at and, and read so much Qur'an. Fine. Does anyone have a guarantee that these deeds were accepted? Were we sincere enough when we performed them? Did we wrong other people? which in effect took away from our good deeds. Many people do have good deeds. They do have good deeds, but so much dhulm, so much dhulm to other human beings, sometimes to one's parents, that it will take away all of these good deeds. You all know the hadith of the bankrupt. The hadith of Abu Huraira and Bukhari and Muslim when the Prophet ﷺ said, Sahaba, do you know who the bankrupt one of my ummah? They said the bankrupt one, one who doesn't have money, doesn't have clothes, doesn't have food. He said, no, this is not the bankrupt one. The bankrupt is the one who will come on Yawm Al-Qiyamah with good deeds. Salah, Siyam, Zakah, Hajj, Umrah. But he would come after having killed that person, for example, or wronged that person, or verbally abused that person. So much dhulm to the people around him. And so the, on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, all of his good deeds will be paid to those whom he wronged. If he runs out of good deeds, not enough good deeds to pay back the dhulm that he was engaged in this dunya, the matter gets worse. Their evil deeds will be removed from them and placed on him. And then he will be thrown into the hellfire. This is an issue which we often neglect. And this is where we need to wake up and realize, time out. Yes, you, you may be doing a lot of good deeds, alhamdulillah, but what about others? What about parents? What is the concept of being dutiful to the parents? And what is the concept of, being, of wronging the parents? We have a misconception about that. The way we hear people now speak to their parents on the phone, the way you see the, the, the teenagers of this day, as if his dad is his, his son. This is, this is beyond haram. This could wipe out your good deeds from scratch. Could leave you bankrupt 100% because this is displeasing to Allah. Allah commanded us in the parents, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Ihsan is not, uh, not just doing the job. Ihsan is going excelling, achieving excellence in regards to your parents. One word you may say to your mom and dad that hurts their feelings, Wallahi could wipe out all of our good deeds. One word. We take it lightly. The parents are after Allah's rights and the Messenger وسلم, the greatest right is the rights of the parents. You have to think a million times before you say a word that may be displeasing to them. And if they're disputing amongst each other, you have to calculate a million times before you take sides with one over the other. By wronging either the father or the mother. You have to know how to work your own situation out with your own parents, making sure that everyone is happy with you. Provided that they're not telling you to disobey Allah. In which case, you obey Allah while maintaining respect to them, while making them feel that you feel sorry that you had to disobey them, but the right of Allah is superior to theirs. There's an approach, there's a way of doing things. And I'm saying this for the youngsters 
whom Allah guides and their parents are not yet guided. So the, the, the children are, are better Islamically than their own parents. And then there's this conflict at home where the, the children may go beyond the acceptable in rejecting their parents' disbelief or their parents' uh, commands, uh, where it's unacceptable to Allah, even if what you're doing is for the sake of Allah. So there's a line which we cannot uh, uh, you know, cross when it comes to respecting the parents. Zulm in general. We've mentioned before, it could be double parking, ya akhwan. Wallahi, it could be double parking and blocking someone and, and you know, ruining their, their day or interrupting them from something that is necessary for them by your careless and negligence is dhulm to the people you will, we will have to be responsible for on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Smokers who are always smoking around and harming all of the creation of Allah, uh, plants and humans and animals. And they think this is not a big deal. Wallahi, this is a big deal. Everyone that you harm because of your smoke, you will have to give them back the right on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. You listen to music, you want to listen so loud that you make the rest of the people hear. This is dhulm to the people. I'm saying things which we usually think now we have become accustomed to like big deal, that's not a big deal. No, that is a big deal. It's a very big deal. Because it deals with dhulm to the creation and you cannot afford that on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So one shouldn't just feel satisfied, but the shaitan would want us to feel this way. Oh, you have many good deeds, don't worry. Your good deeds will outweigh the bad deeds. Yeah, this is provided that all the good deeds were accepted and there's no zoom to the creation. But which one of us is like that? Allah musta'an. As for Yawm Al-Qiyamah, then that's a whole other ordeal. One of the... This ayah, ayah 281, I believe in Surah Al-Baqarah, some of the scholars say this was the last ayah revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And some of the narrations mention that he only lived nine days after this particular ayah was revealed as per Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. And this ayah is among the final admonishments that Allah Azza wa Jal revealed to the humankind. Muslims and non-Muslims. A reminder for all to be mindful of. And it is a statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And fear, be mindful, protect yourself, prepare yourself for a day in which you will return to Allah. Remember that day, because there's no escape. This is the first scene. Then the second scene, ثُمَّ تُوَفَّ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ Then every soul will be recompensed as, recompensed as per what it put forth. وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And no one will be wronged. No one will be treated unjustly by Allah Azza wa Jal. So that day in which we return to Allah ultimately is Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And you all know that as we speak right now, Mikail or Israfil Afwan. Israfil is, 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 uh, has the horn ready and he is awaiting the command from Allah Azza wa Jal to blow into the horn. And this is day as Allah Azza wa Jal said, إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا The people, human beings perceive this day as being something that is far, but we see it as something being near. And it is very near. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that he was sent forth along with the hour like this and he put these two fingers together. The time between the advent of the Messenger of Allah and Yawm Al-Qiyamah is a short period. In our case, it is even much shorter because we cannot live that time from the time of the Messenger of Allah until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So we're looking at 40, 50, 60 years depending on how long one of us lives. This is all that we get, all the, chance, all the chances we get to fix our situation in this dunya before we return to Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Now we know already on Yawm Al-Qiyamah the condition of the people. And we know that the people will stand for 50,000 years. 50,000 years in their own perspiration, in their own sweat, each drowning according to his deeds. And that the people will reach the point of, of, you know, of the inability to, to remain in this condition. And they start looking for someone to intercede until, until the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa will intercede for the people. And then accountability begins. Now when accountability begins, of course, you know, Jahannam will be brought forth and some people will be thrown straight into the hellfire. The kuffar will be thrown straight into the hellfire. The believer will go through accountability. And that accountability will be very detailed with nothing missing out from the record. 
every single deed we have done, whether good or bad, will be presented. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ If it is the equivalent of an ant or a grain of good, we shall see it. And if it's the equivalent of a grain or an ant of sin, uh, we should also see it. There is no way around it. And Allah described this day by saying, وَيَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ فَفَزِعَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ وَكُلٌّ أَتَوْهُ دَاخِرِينَ And warn the day of the horn, the day the horn will be blown. And whosoever is in the heavens and whosoever is on the earth will be terrified. Terrified. Except whom Allah wills. And all of them will come to him in humiliation. Everybody will come to Allah in humiliation. The big boss and the, the president and the king and the prince and all the people who might have lived a lavish life in this dunya and might have taken advantage of others and might have wronged the people. On Yawm Al-Qiyamah they will come in the state of humiliation because they will be before the Malik, the ultimate Malik, Allah Azza wa Jal. And so the, on that day it will not benefit. The person's entourage and the person's clan and the person's, uh, you know, pe no one will be able to help this particular person on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So everyone will come to Allah Dakhirin. And Allah Azza wa Jal teaches us that on that day, no one can benefit you either with the Shafa'ah. If someone were to intercede for one of us, it will not, Allah will not accept it unless Allah is pleased with the intercessor and the one who's being interse uh, interceded for. Which means both have to be upon Tawheed. And both has, Allah has to be pleased with both of them for the Shafa'ah to take place. Otherwise, the Shafa'ah of the dunya, which we have today, will not be effective on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Allah further reminds us in the Qur'an, يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ تَوَدُّ لَوْ أَنَّ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَهُ أَمَدًا بَعِيدًا وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ وَاللَّهُ رَؤُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ The day where each soul will find what it has done of good right before it. And what it has done of evil deeds, it will wish that there was a vast huge distance between that soul and these evil deeds. Yani our evil deeds will be, will be clinging to us. And we would want to exp, you know, dispose them and get rid of them and, and move out without them and they would be glued to one of us. And we would wish that these deeds will be far away and distant. But they will not go away. And Allah warns us of Himself. That alone is a scary ayah. Allah is warning us against Himself. Yet Allah is merciful to the, to the creation. And this is from the mercy of Allah. Because if Allah weren't merciful to us, then we will be done. But we shouldn't take advantage of this mercy, my brothers and sisters in Islam. We should, we should fear and be mindful of the first part of the ayah. Every single evil deed we commit, it will be presented on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. If we don't repent from this deed now, we will have to see it on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and we will be exposed before the creation. Now it's hidden. On that day it's exposed. On that day it's exposed. But if we repent to Allah now, it will go away. This is from the mercy of Allah. This is why Tawbah has to take place on constant basis. Every minute of the day, every time we disobey Allah, we have to do Tawbah. Allah Azza wa Jal further divides the creation. يَوْمَ تَبْيَضُّ وُجُوهٌ وَتَسْوَدُّ وُجُوهُ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ سْوَدَّتْ وُجُوهُمْ أَكَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ فَذُوقُوا الْعَذَابَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ on the day where faces will turn white and some faces will turn black. As for those whose faces turn black, to them it will be said, Did you disbelieve after you believe, after your belief, then taste the punishment for what you used to reject. So on that day we will be divided. Our faces, our appearance, our condition, everyone will be naked and uncircumcised as it comes in the hadith of Aisha. Now we are, we are covered. And we, we adorn ourselves with the garment which, which serves many purposes. Among them is security, covering yourself. Because a human being by nature is supposed to be bashful enough and modest enough that when he or she is naked, that they feel ashamed. Of course, we have a, a group of human beings who don't understand this. And they work the other way, where they only feel comfortable when they do na get naked. But in the, in the case of the sound human being with the natural disposition, then sir, this is an issue. This is an ultimate issue. But on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, no one will be able to get dressed yet. So Aisha said, O Messenger of Allah, men and women, 
Men and women will be naked. He said, oh Aisha, the matter is much greater than that. The affair will be so great that even though they will be naked men and naked women, no one will even bother to look at the other gender. This is Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And this is the condition which we will be in on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Nasallah al -afiyah. Now listen to this. For those who disbelieve, for those who reject the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they think that they have made the right choices in life. And this goes out specifically to the, the family members and the people we know. It's okay, we don't need it. To the, the family members and the people we know who have not embraced Islam. And, and from this, from this uh, place, I say and repeat, why, why are we always trying to give you da'wah? Do you think it's a, a form of harassment or we find pleasure in, in, in picking on you by making you change your religion or this is something that we do just for entertainment? La wallah. This is to us the most serious affair we could think about. There isn't anything more important than this because this is salvation. A person may continue to ignore, but then if the person does not have salvation prior to departure, that person will never be admitted to paradise. Do we want any of our family members to enter the hellfire? We seek refuge with Allah if we were sound people. So this reminder goes out to those who have not embraced faith. Allah said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ أَنَّ لَهُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَهُ لِيَفْتَدُوا بِهِ مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَا تُقُبِّلَ مِنْ مِنْهُمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Indeed, those who disbelieve, if they should have all that is in the earth, if they should have all that is in the earth and the like of it, with, which, with it by which to ransom themselves from the punishment of the day of resurrection, it will not be accepted from them and for them is a pain, painful punishment. Okay, if someone owned this world, if this whole earth was the property of someone, can you imagine how much wealth is involved in this? And that person on Yawm Al-Qiyamah would wish that they can ransom themselves from the punishment by paying this whole earth and what's upon it, Allah said it will not be accepted of them. Now, the people who are being, who are, who are told this, don't own the earth. They don't have anything. Maybe uh, some land and some cars and a house. And so how is that going to save them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah? If they had the whole earth, Allah will not accept it. What will Allah accept? Allah will accept la ilaha illallah, that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. The message of Ibrahim, Abraham, and the message of Moses, and the message of Jesus, all of them taught the people the same exact message. Never did a messenger tell the people to have another God with the Creator, or that the Creator begot a son, or anything of this sort. It was always the message of the oneness and uniqueness of Allah, which we have to adhere to, if we want salvation. We have to adhere to. If we want success, we have to take the time to study. Because the whole earth will not benefit us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Allah further tells us about uh, the condition of each one of us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. يوم تأتي كل نفس تجادل, تجادل عن نفسها وتوفى كل نفس ما عملت وهم لا يظلمون On the day when every soul will come disputing for itself. And every soul will be fully compensated for what it did and they will not be wrong. Nowadays, nowadays, when you try to present your case to someone and you fail in doing so, you bring some assistant who may be more eloquent than yourself to explain on your behalf. You seek assistance. Or if you fail in doing it yourself, then, then you're stuck. On Yawm Al-Qiyamah, th there is no such thing. Yawm Yafirru Al-Mar'u Min on the day when the person will run away from his own brother, or the different ayat, and his own mother and father, and his own wife and kids, everyone will have his own affair to deal with. So can you imagine going to your own father or your own mother say, you know, do something on my behalf. I'm your own child, your own seed, who you looked after in the dunya. I need you now. No one will be looking after you. Your own wife will not know you. Your own kids will not know you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So one will have to argue on his own behalf. If one was good in arguing, then one may be able to, to deceive uh, Allah Azza wa Jal. But Allah cannot be deceived. 
Allah cannot be deceived because the angels wrote down, اليوم نختم على أفوائهم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون. This day the mouths will be sealed and the hands will speak and the legs, the feet will speak about what we used to earn. So Allah will seal our mouths and our own limbs will bear witness against us. You did this on that day. You looked at this with your eye and you heard this with your ear and you walked to this destination with your foot and you did this with your own hands, they will bear witness. So even if we wanted to dispute on our own behalf, it will not be successful. It will not be successful with Allah Azza wa Jal because He knows the خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنُ وَمَا تُخْفِي الصُّدُورِ Allah knows what the eyes, the treachery of the eye and what the chests conceal. Allah further says to those who were heedless of this day, فَذُوقُوا بِمَا نَسِيتُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا إِنَّا نَسِيْنَاكُمْ وَذُوقُوا عَذَابَ الْخُلْدِ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ So taste the punishment because you forgot the meeting of this day. How many of us have actually forgot about يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ By Allah, don't answer me. Each one of us should ask himself, how many times do we think about يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ per day? How many times in one day, 24 hours, or the, the amount of time we are up, do we actually think about Yawm Al-Qiyamah and about accountability and standing before Allah? How many times a day? If any time a day. How many times a week? How many times a month? How many times a year? Or have we ever done it even once? With proper reflection. It's not like a, a thought which comes, anyone can think anything. It's not about just thinking about it for a split second. It's about just stopping. It's about stopping. Wait, wait, what am I doing? What am I doing now? Where am I going? And, and what, what will I answer Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah? If we had this attitude in regards to every good deed or every bad deed we are about to commit, Wallahi, we would be excellent Muslims because we will engage in all the possible good deeds and abandon all the bad deeds. But the truth, my brothers and sisters, we don't think about it properly. And Allah said, because we forgot about this day, then this is how we'll be treated. We would be made to taste the punishment. As Allah said in, in, in the other surah, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى Whoever turns away from this remembrance of Allah will lead a miserable life. And ask those who are far away from Allah how miserable they are. Even though they try to claim to themselves and others otherwise, deep down they know. And those who live the life of ignorance can testify to this. The, the short pleasure does not, does not have a long effect. You can enjoy yourselves in so many ways that Allah made unlawful, but that is only for a period of time. And if a person reaches the state where even in that they find pleasure, then this is a calamity that this person's heart has been X'd out. Completely, where now it's the opposite, things are the opposite. They find pleasure in disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal. So that, that day, whoever turns away from the remembrance of Allah will lead a miserable life. And he will be gathered amongst the people on Yawm Al-Qiyamah A'ma. He will be blind or she will be blind. And they will question, they will inquire. لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا How come I'm blind today but I used to be able to see in the dunya? And what is the response from Allah? Such our ayat, which means the Qur'an, and the sunnah, and the admonishment, and the reminder, and the universal signs which we see in this world. They came to you, but you forgot about them. And similarly, today you will be forgotten. You will be forgotten. And this is, this is the equal recompense. It's justice from Allah. So how guilty are we of forgetting about the last day? Everyone knows himself and herself. And therefore we are guilty now of possibly having this ayah apply to us. Are we ready for this kind of situation? And if death comes before we make that preparation, then what would our condition be? Until when death comes to one of us, he'll say, Oh Allah, allow me to return. So I may do good in that which I left behind. And the clear-cut answer is, no. 
إِنَّهَا كَلِمَةٌ هُوَ قَائِلُهَا It is only a word that a person will be allowed to say, but it will not be fulfilled, it will not be given. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَالْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون. How many times have you heard these ayat? How many times? These are some serious ayat. Allah is telling us, admonishing our hearts, our hard, rotten hearts, who have become concealed with our sins, where we don't see and don't understand properly. Look at what you have put forth for tomorrow. The children, what are you teaching them? And we are all guilty of our of shortcomings with our children in regards to Islamic studies and Islamic education and Islamic upbringing. All of us. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ What are we doing for our children for their future with Allah Azza wa Jal before we worry about the future at work and their future with degrees and their future with may, becoming successful? Their future with Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. How, how much effort are we putting into that? What are we putting forth for tomorrow? And do not be like those who forgot about Allah, so He made them forget about themselves. And this is what happens. We, it's, it's, a, it's a step by step. The shaitan is slick. He, he knows. He knows from experience that he may not be able to drag one of us instantly into what he wants. So he follows a methodology, a gradual methodology. Step by step, he will bring the person to where he wants him to be. And we can reach a point where we forget about Allah until we reach a point where we forget about ourselves. Then we become blind and deaf and, and we don't understand. According to Allah, these are the corrupt, defiant, disobedient people. They're never equal, the inhabitants of Jannah and the inhabitants of the fire. Shall we treat the Muslims and the criminals the same? What is the matter with you? How do you judge? How do you judge? So, so where are we? Where are we? Seriously, many things we have taken lightly. Sisters who don't wear the hijab, as Allah commanded, and they have been reminded multiple times, Yeah, sister, wallah, you cannot handle the fire. Yeah, sister, cover yourself up now, you will be saved on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. You expose yourself now and you may be tortured on Yawm Al-Qiyamah with the same skin you used to expose. With the same skin that you used to expose. Disobedience to the husband. Disobedience to the husband ignoring his rights. And I'm not saying this only in favor of the, the brothers. And the same goes for the brothers in regards to their wives. But this phenomena of women going against their husband as if her husband is some, some, some clown she has at home that she can command and, and play with is another situation. Be, be mindful of Allah in regards to your husband. He has a right over you that Allah gave him. He should not take advantage of it, but he has a right that you have to fulfill. And the same goes towards your children. What are you teaching them? How are you educating them? How are you helping them get closer to Allah? Do you teach them salah? How many of the children pray? And if they pray, how do they pray? And when do they pray? This is, the husband is often at work. So the sister has many, many rights and she has many obligations that we don't see the sisters today fulfilling. We don't see many of them fulfilling. So this has to be taken care of. Brothers with girlfriends, brothers who are still chatting with, with women, trying to find the next spouse, brothers who you know, take these matters lightly. We have to stop this, these, these jokes. We have to stop this behavior. We have to know where to draw the line. People who listen to music, in spite of them knowing it's haram, or by claiming it's halal while they know deep down it's haram. When are we going to stop? The Quran has become repulsive for these people. He cannot stand long in salah. The imam takes too long. But if he were to listen to his favorite album, he will hear it from the first track till the last track. With no issues at all. But he can't hear uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. It just seems to be too much. It's because the shaitan has taken over the heart and replaced the Kalam al-Rahman with his own words. The words of the most merciful are insufficient for that person. They prefer the, the, the words of singers. And the list goes on.
The list goes on. These are things which are prevalent among the Muslims that we have taken lightly and we need to use this, these blessed nights to stop. Wallahi, every night, every night, we stand behind the Imam to hear the Salah, we should realize that we are being, we are being given an opportunity by Allah to hear these reminders and we will be held accountable for having heard these reminders. We will remember that we heard these ayat which Allah reminded us of and what we did or we didn't do about them. So I invite myself, my sinful self, first and foremost. And I know my own shortcomings, the many millions of them. And then I invite you, my brothers and sisters, to, to make that serious conviction to start a new life. Again, once again, start a new life with Allah. Let us calm down and let us be mindful of others and let us avoid oppression. Let's, let's live Islam in our lives. Let Islam govern our lives. Let us submit to Allah and to the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, and don't debate with it, negotiate with it, go against it for desires or for the pleasure of the people. We know the halal and the haram and we know the wajib and the mustahab and the makruh and we know all this stuff already. The things which have been agreed upon that they are obligatory and we know deep down obligatory, we, let's just do them. Let's just do them. And don't worry about the creation, they will not benefit us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. But let us decide already to begin this new page. So when we return to Allah, then what can we say about Jannah? And what can we say about what is better than Allah being pleased with you? Allah Azza wa Jal Himself being pleased with you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and telling you words of goodness and telling you, my slave, have you forgotten anything? Is there anything else in paradise which you want? Allah speaking to us in Jannah. Allah Azza wa Jal showing us His face and His beauty in Jannah. What, what else? What's better than this? And what are we told to do? Something, climb the mountain every day 500 times to be admitted to Jannah. La Wallah. Just fulfill the obligations and stay away from the prohibitions. And we're being promised reward beyond our imagination. It's right there around the corner. It's around the corner. So if you fail in achieving it, then we have failed, Wallah. We have failed ultimately. So let us realize what is at stake and what is waiting for us. That moment of, of entering paradise and relaxing, relaxing forever. No more rent, no more uh, hassle, no more laws, no more human being oppression, no more racism. All of this khalas, all of this will come to an end. And then eternity is there for, for the pleasure of the believer. This is what we are being promised if we do what Allah Azza wa Jal wants today. So ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to be among those who follow the best of the guidance, the guidance of the Prophet والسلام, and to hear the reminder and follow it to the best of their ability. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد